Welcome to the Dash 8 Q400 Systems Training Course Aircraft Introduction Module. In this module, we will examine some of the overall goals of this series of Q400 training videos. We will also give a general description of the Q400, including some of its key dimensions and major aircraft sections that you should be familiar with. We will give an overview of the various panels in the flight deck, discuss the various doors and exits located on the Q400, talk about the wings and empennage sections, and we will discuss the A and VS system. Finally, we will discuss some general limitations of this aircraft that all pilots should be familiar with. So why am I putting together this Q400 training course? I want to help provide you, the Q400 enthusiast, with a very in-depth understanding of the various Q400 systems. Not just which switches to push and when, but why and how does it affect the aircraft and its various systems. Once we've looked at the various systems, we will tie it all together with a series of videos showing exactly how the pros fly the Q400 in real line flying. Most of all, I want to help you make the most out of the Majestic Q400. Majestic has created a very detailed simulation of the Q400 and I am happy to help you operate this aircraft as close to real life as possible. Please note that this will not be a quick start tutorial. There are plenty of those here on YouTube already. If you're looking for a quick start, please use the search bar above to find one. This course is going to delve right into some very in-depth instructions on the systems and operations of the Q400. To keep the course moving along, I will assume viewers understand many basic topics related to aviation. If you do not understand something, please ask in the comments below. Simpler questions I will attempt to answer within the comments. Questions that require a more complex response may be the basis of future videos. So please ask away. I look forward to answering all of your questions. The Dash 8 Q400 aircraft is a high-wing, twin-turboprop, transport category aircraft manufactured by Bombardier Aerospace. It is the fourth and newest iteration of the de Havilland Dash 8 series. The Q400 is powered by two Pratt & Whitney PW150A turboprop engines, each capable of producing up to 5,071 shaft horsepower and each driving a six-bladed propeller. The aircraft can carry up to 80 passengers and up to six crew, depending on the seating configuration selected by the airline. Normally the aircraft carries a crew of four, two pilots and two flight attendants. The minimum crew is two pilots. Operating this aircraft single pilot, as many flight sim enthusiasts do, is not easy during times of high workload. The Q400 has a maximum takeoff weight of 65,200 pounds with the optional enhanced gross weight supplement. The service ceiling for the Q400 is 25,000 feet, though an optional 27,000 foot service ceiling supplement can be purchased from the manufacturer. Pilots should be familiar with the key dimensions of their aircraft as these may limit areas where the aircraft can operate. The most critical dimensions on the Q400 are wingspan 93 feet 3 inches and wheel track 28 feet 10 inches. The propellers on the Q400 have a diameter of 13 feet 6 inches. The Q400 is also 107 feet 9 inches long and has a maximum tail height of 27 feet 4 inches though this figure can vary somewhat depending upon aircraft loading. One other critical dimension to be aware of is the minimum radius required for a 180 degree turn. Without using reverse, a 180 degree turn will require a paved area that is a minimum of 84 feet 5 inches wide. The following aircraft sections may be referenced in future lessons so it is important to be aware of their definition. The aircraft can be divided into a forward, center and aft section. The forward section extends from the flight compartment aft bulkhead forward. The aft section extends from the aft pressure dome rearward. The center section is the area in between these sections. The forward section contains the unpressurized nose compartment and the pressurized flight compartment separated by the forward pressure bulkhead. The center section contains the cabin and the aft baggage compartment. The aft section contains the unpressurized tail and empennage. The flight compartment contains two seats for the pilots as well as an observer jump seat. Various safety equipment is located on the rear bulkhead of the flight compartment. The flight compartment contains various panels which are used to control the aircraft. You must be familiar with the name and location of the following panels. The overhead panel contains switches which control most of the aircraft systems. The caution and warning lights panel contains 84 caution lights and 12 warning lights to indicate a non-normal condition for the aircraft. The glare shield panel contains the flight guidance control panel which controls the autopilot and flight director and some other critical shutoff and control switches. The flight instrument panel contains five EFIS displays for flying the aircraft and monitoring aircraft systems. 
The center console contains engine controls, flight management systems, radio controls, and other controls for the EFIS and Air Data computers. The pilot's and co-pilot's side panels contain a few control switches. Circuit breaker panels are located on the rear bulkhead of the flight compartment behind each pilot's outboard shoulder. The cabin of the Q400 has four exits. The various doors are labeled using a number letter combination. For example, 1L indicates the front left door, 2R indicates the rear right door. The 1L door is the main passenger entrance and has integral air stairs. The 2L door is the aft passenger door used by some airlines for loading. Optional retractable stairs are available for the 2L door. The 2R door is a service door used primarily for loading catering. The 1R door is a plug type emergency escape hatch used only in emergencies. The baggage compartments each have one external door. The baggage compartment doors can only be opened from the outside. The aft baggage hold is the full width of the fuselage behind the cabin and is the primary baggage hold. It is not accessible from the passenger cabin. The forward baggage hold is a small closet area at the front of the cabin across from the 1L door. It can be accessed from within the cabin through a door, but is not usable as an emergency escape route, as the external door can only be opened from the outside. Note that all six cabin and external baggage doors can be monitored from the flight deck using the doors page of the MFD. Red indicates an open door, green indicates closed and locked. Additionally, the fuselage door's light on the caution warning panel illuminates when any door is open, and the warning light illuminates with three chimes any time a door is actually opened. An emergency escape hatch is located in the ceiling of the flight deck. Should the flight deck door be jammed, it can be opened from the inside to allow egress. Note that there is no electronic indication inside the flight deck that the escape hatch is open. Of course, the pilots only need to look up to see if it is actually open. The Q400 has a cantilevered high wing with a high aspect ratio. The wing contains integral fuel tanks, and the trailing edge features ailerons and flaps for aircraft control. Additionally, spoilers on the upper surface of the wing provide additional roll control authority and help to reduce lift on landing. Each wing also has a nacelle containing an engine and the main landing gear. The empennage is the part of the aircraft aft of the aft pressure dome. Contained within the fuselage portion of the empennage are the air conditioning packs and the optional APU. Connected to the fuselage is a vertical stabilizer with a two-piece rudder, and at the top of the vertical stabilizer is a horizontal stabilizer with elevator. One of the key features of the Q400 is the ANVS, or Active Noise and Vibration Suppression System. This system uses a series of microphones throughout the cabin to detect engine noise and vibration. A series of hammers located under the floor creates similar sounds that are 180 degrees out of phase, causing destructive interference with the engine noise, thus reducing noise levels within the cabin. Theoretically. This system is the reason for the Q in Q400. Q stands for quiet. The system runs automatically, though it can be controlled from the flight attendant control panel. In reality, this system wears out very easily due to the hard work it does to keep up with the engines. In some aircraft, it is very effective. In others, not so much. Finally, in this module, we come to aircraft limitations. Aircraft limitations are key figures that should be committed to memory by pilots. The following are some general operating limitations of the Q400. Limitations that are specific to certain systems will be dealt with in those modules. The maximum operating altitude for the Q400 is 25,000 feet. The maximum altitude for takeoff and landing is 10,000 feet. And the maximum altitude for extending the gear or flap is 15,000 feet. The maximum runway slope, not really applicable to FSX users, is plus or minus 2 degrees. The maximum tailwind component for takeoff and landing is 10 knots. The maximum crosswind component for takeoff and landing on a wet or dry paved runway is 32 knots. The ambient outside air temperature limits for the Q400 are minimum minus 54 degrees Celsius and maximum plus 50 degrees Celsius or ISA plus 35 degrees Celsius, whichever is lower. The following are some airspeed limitations of the Q400. VMO, or the maximum operating speed, is exactly that, the maximum speed at which the Q400 should be operated at in flight. 
This is given as a table with a series of points, and VMO varies linearly between all these points. Fortunately, VMO is displayed on the airspeed indicator as a white and red tape that appears as VMO is approached, so the particular values here do not need to be memorized. VFE is the maximum flap extension speed. Flaps should not be extended above the speed indicated for each flap setting. The following are some additional airspeed limitations for the Q400. The maximum landing gear operating speed, or VLO, is the maximum speed at which it is safe to extend or retract the gear. VLE, or the maximum landing gear extended speed, is the maximum speed for the aircraft once the gear is already extended. The alternate gear extension speed is the maximum speed at which it is safe to run the alternate gear extension mechanism. And the rough airspeed is the maximum airspeed for flight in severe turbulence for this aircraft. The following table contains the maximum weights for the Q400. There are actually four different sets of weight limits for the Q400 aircraft that an airline can order. Based on Majestic's control panel, it appears that they have modeled the highest gross weight model available. The weights for this model are displayed here. The ramp weight is the maximum weight for the aircraft to be loaded on the ramp prior to engine start with fuel and passengers. The maximum takeoff weight is, exactly as the name implies, the maximum weight for takeoff. Note that it is 200 pounds less than the ramp weight, the assumption being that an aircraft will burn 200 pounds for engine start and taxi to the runway. The maximum landing weight, again, is fairly self-explanatory. It's the maximum weight for landing that will not require a maintenance inspection. The maximum zero fuel weight is the maximum weight of the airframe and payload without fuel. Some aircraft weight must be carried as fuel in the wings to ensure the bending moment at the wing to fuselage joint is not excessive. This concludes the current module. We will now conduct a brief review. I suggest you prepare to pause the video as each question is displayed and attempt to answer it yourself before the correct answer is revealed. Let's begin. This concludes the current module. I hope you found this information useful. Please ask any questions you may have in the comments section below. And please subscribe to the channel to be alerted when more modules are complete. Thank you for watching.